I just clicked on the academics page while perusing the DePaul University website, and I saw the motto, where critical thinking meets real world doing. Boy, did we get a powerful example of what that means when critical thinker Milo Yiannopoulos met some real world doers. And when I say real world doers, I mean spoiled narcissists who stormed the stage to keep their delicate ears from hearing Milo tell them what he thinks about third wave feminism or the wage gap. Please, Do you need some sir. Help? Sir, please! Sir, please! I assumed that police would intervene immediately, but as someone who's been thrown in jail for having a peaceful discussion on a public street, I should have known better. The college Republican group that sponsored the event had confidence in the police too, as they repeatedly warned the angry protesters that those still on stage when police arrived would be arrested. Imagine their surprise when a brood of jellyfish wearing uniforms and badges oozed through the doors and informed everyone that they would do absolutely nothing to stop the hostile takeover of a scheduled event. Thousands of dollars for security and the security is doing nothing. Nothing. I'm what are we paying for security for? Do your job! What's amazing here is that the protesters themselves thought that police were going to protect the speakers. You can tell because once they stormed the stage, they had nothing to say. One of them, a student named Kayla Johnson, even strong-armed a microphone. But she had no message, so she ended up doing a little dance instead. Edward Ward, a minister who had the mic most of the time, would occasionally break the awkward silence with a few rambling taunts, but generally, he blew a whistle. <laughs> Trigglypuff had more to say than that. So in all their preparation and planning, for this takeover, it never crossed their minds that police were simply going to stand by and let them do whatever they wanted. If they had known that, they presumably would have tried putting together some sort of coherent message so that the rest of us could finally understand whether there are any actual thoughts associated with all the moaning and wailing. And for the record, I'm someone who is genuinely interested in what they might have to say. I agree with them that there are social injustices in the world and that we need to deal with these social injustices. I just can't for the life of me understand what these self-proclaimed social justice warriors are doing to make any situation better anywhere. And I've been wondering for a long time if the elevator goes all the way up to the top floor. Sadly, the clearest message of the evening came from the police themselves, and the message was, if you don't like what someone has to say at DePaul University, you don't have to tolerate it. You don't have to respect other people's rights. The moment you disagree with someone, simply rush the stage, take the microphone by force, and stand there threatening people until everyone leaves. Trying to hit me. We've, we've, had a, we've had our first threat of violence now, so that's great. Since the message is now official, DePaul University needs to take down this nonsense about critical thinking meeting real world doing. The new motto should be DePaul University, where critical thinkers are silenced by brainwashed lib drones while spineless do nothings with badges openly encourage the breakdown of Western civilization. Doesn't have the same ring to it, but at least it's honest. Now, I could comment on the video for hours, but I'm sure other people are going to do that. I'd like to spend just a few moments discussing what can be done about the wave of event hijackers. We know for a fact that police will not protect controversial speakers like Milo Yiannopoulos on certain college campuses. Universities and police are giving in to the tantrums of protesters like a mother gives in to the tantrum of a toddler rolling around on the floor in a Walmart checkout lane demanding a pack of M&Ms. This means, of course, that Milo and the groups that sponsor his events need some way of maintaining order for themselves because universities and police aren't going to do it. 
Milo has tried to do this before. For instance, I once saw him warning protesters that he would donate money to Donald Trump every time they interrupted him. Oh, uh, by the way, sorry, I did forget to mention one thing. For every unscheduled interruption, going back to the beginning of this show, I'm going to give $50 to the Donald Trump campaign. And, um... I thought that would work, but apparently the Feel the Burn crowd has so little self-control, they can't stop screaming, even if their screams fuel the presidential campaign of Donald Trump the same way the screams of children fuel the city of Monstropolis and Monsters, Inc. So Milo needs to try something even more drastic than sending money to Donald Trump. Here's my proposal. Campus social justice warriors have become experts in shouting people down, but it's really all they know how to do. They're completely one dimensional. Now, most of the auditoriums Milo speaks in are equipped with projectors. You can't shut down visual aids. So I suggest beginning every Milo event like this. Good evening, students. We understand that some of you may be here to disrupt this event, but many of us are here to learn something tonight, and we don't want to waste our brief time together with long periods of screaming. So whenever Milo can't continue speaking because the noise makes it impossible to understand him, we're going to start a slideshow that everyone can read together while you scream. Once you calm down, we'll stop the slideshow and get back to Milo. Then, when they start screaming anyway, or storm the stage, the moderator can say, okay, we can't hear Milo, let's take a timeout and look at some slides until the protesters stop crying for attention. But here we might wonder what should be in the slideshow that could hush the masses of thoughtless, delusional whiners. Well, as Milo has noted, for some bizarre reason, social justice warriors typically view Muslims as the most oppressed people in the world. And they might have a point if only they were focusing on the treatment of Muslim women in countries governed by Sharia. But they're not focusing on any actual Muslim victims of oppression. They've simply been conditioned to view any criticism of Islam as the product of racism and bigotry. So when they invariably become disruptive, the moderator simply has to start educating the audience about Islam through the power of visual media. Ladies and gentlemen, or whatever you consider yourselves, if you want to talk about social injustice, let's take a look at history's greatest source of social injustice until you decide it's okay to get back to the topics we came here to discuss. It wouldn't be difficult to put together two to three hundred slides like this. I think the protesters will quiet down fairly quickly because they'll get very uncomfortable with so many students reading quotes like this. Unfortunately, since the people who try to shout Milo down don't seem to be governed by anything remotely resembling rational thought, it's difficult to predict what they'll do beyond the inevitable screaming part. Worst case scenario. If they scream their way through the entire event, at least everyone will walk out of there much better informed about something. Those are my thoughts. Anyone else got any theories on what to do about the ever increasing numbers of college students who seem incapable of open discussion? Let me know in the comments section.